US security agencies are today investigating exactly how hackers were able to carry out multiple attacks which caused massive online disruption, well, on this and the other side of the Atlantic. It took down popular sites, including Netflix, Twitter and Spotify. The attacks targeted a little-known internet infrastructure company which provides crucial services to all those affected sites. Uh, well, to discuss this in more depth, I'm joined by the technology journalist Kate Bevan. Kate, good to see you. Um, first, let, let, let's deal with this company, Din, Dine. Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, Din. Uh, what exactly, what is the service that it provides that okay, makes they, it so crucial? They do DNS. DNS is like the internet's phone book. So you have a, a website that's skynews.com, for example. The internet knows that as a series of numbers. So what DNS does is match the, the letters you type in, the address you type in, with the, with the what's called the IP address, the phone number. And that's quite an old structure mm. um, that was built in the days when the internet was a very small thing. So it's actually, it, it's quite sort of rickety in many ways. And as we've discovering, it's actually very easy to take down. And what, what's important here is that lots of big websites are not just one e address. There are lots of servers mm -hmm. serving up different parts of websites, which is why you suddenly didn't see pictures on Twitter last night or, you know, something wasn't loading properly. They're, it can't ring all the phone numbers, pull the content together and deliver it to your screen. So, so, so by, by intervening, by essentially yep. stopping the switchboard from directing yep, exactly. your call onto these websites. So, so let's talk about that particular process. We keep hearing this, this name, it's a, a DDoS attack, yep. a distributed denial, denial of, of service. service. Take us through that. Okay, what happens there is compromised devices, which in this case look to be the Internet of Things devices from one particular Chinese company, are co-opted by malware to become part of this botnet. They're often called zombie devices because mm -hmm. they're just responding sort of like a zombie. Um, and what they do is they fire, each one fires individual requests to a website or to a DNS server. Um, and eventually the, the websites are so overwhelmed they just fall over, which is what just, happened just last night. Much, just it's too just much, just too much traffic. It's like having lots on. of people talking at you all at once. Once. Well, just, we're just taking a look at the map there, and obviously the, the, the red areas are those yep. which, which have been uh, more affected. What would be most surprising, we were talking uh, last hour to, to, to our correspondent about this, the relation to what, what's known as the, the Internet of Things, mm -hmm. that it's not just your laptop that is a smart device these days, it's your fridge, it's your, your baby monitor. It's your all cat of... flap. I have a, you know, my cat flaps. You have a Wi-Fi-enabled cat flap. I have a tweeting cat flap. Okay. Um, that, I, that, I'm pretty sure that's fairly secure, but uh, it's your fridge, it's your printer, it's your Wi-Fi cat it's all these devices that are online and a lot of them are incredibly insecure. Um, this particularly seems to have been um, internet cameras, security cameras that you can look at from, you know, when you're away from home to, to check up on your cat, um, for example. And they have default passwords that you can't change, that consumers can't change. Well, so why? This, this, this puzzles me. I mean, manufacturers must surely have been aware. You connect a device yep. to the internet, it can be enslaved as part of a botnet. Yep. So why have they? built them in this way? It's just an two, oversight. Two reasons. First of all, um, the data they produce is what's called M2M data, machine to machine data. It's not personally identifiable, so it's not protected by the various data protection laws um, in the US, in the UK and in the EU and the rest of the world. So the fines are much smaller. Uh, and secondly, because it's just a bit of a bolt-on because there isn't a huge risk to them as far as the manufacturers are concerned. Therefore, security is an afterthought, a bolt-on. Security needs to be designed as absolutely part of these things from the ground up, and they're not. So they're very, very easy to crack. They've got default passwords. Consumers can't change them. Therefore, they are absolutely wide open. Uh, can we just uh, deal a little bit more with the, the, the botnet and these mm. DDoS attacks? I mean, this, this is very much a, a blunt instrument, isn't it? It's not, it's not a sophisticated hack. At the same time, if you have tens of millions of devices slaved all around the world and you're offering that to the highest bidder. You can. I mean, you can buy these things. It's, it's kind of a tax as a service. I mean, you think about buying um, Office as a service or... HR services as a service through the cloud. You can buy this stuff online too. You can buy an attack. Um, I was, saw that there was some discussion that there was only something like 10% capacity of this botnet that potentially exists. So they thought that it was somebody testing a weapon for something bigger. Of course, the concern is the US election. Kate Bevan, it is, it is scary, but thank you it for taking... fascinating. <laughs> fascinating and scary at the Terrifying. same time. Thank you very much for taking us through that.